Good evening, my name is Edgar Contreras. Today we're going to talk about feed forward control. In just in case you have any inquiries, you may find me on my email shown in the slide. Now, what is feed forward control? Well, the feed forward control, also called feed forward, is a control that measures the disturbances that reach the system and acts by controlling the system to compensate for the disturbances effects and it doesn't, modify, it doesn't modify its output, which we, we can see depicted as letter D being our disturbance, the YSP, which is our initial signal for the process, and then the feed forward controller, which sends a signal for our process. As we can see, this is an open uh, loop uh, system. Therefore, we we have that the disturbance affects the process. And then, it's uh, processed by the feed forward controlled uh, feed forward controller, and then it it sends a signal to minimize the disturbance occurring on the process. Then, uh, we we simply have uh, the the output of the process. This method of control allows us to anticipate the changes that will suffer the system and compensates them before the output of the system changes. In a sense, feed forward control is used to reduce the effects of measurable disturbances. What are some of the examples of feed forward control? Well, we have a precise temperature control of an oven. Uh, the power is reduced when the ambient temperature, which is our disturbance, increases. This control responds to room temperature disturbances before the oven temperature changes. We have again um, a speed control of a DC motor. Uh, this works when the current is uh, when the current consumed is measured and the motor voltage is increased when the current increases to compensate for the loss of speed. Then we have a, a, a cruise control of a car. Uh, uh, this works when the power of the car engine is increased when a sensor detects an uphill inclination, which is our disturbance. In the event of a downhill slope, the engine power is reduced to compensate for the, the inclination uh, disturbance. And uh, we have a media roll. Uh, which uh, works when a coil that rolls up uh, material uh, begins with a small diameter and ends with a much larger diameter. Uh, by measuring the diameter, which would be our disturbance, which is being affected, uh, the coil can be prefed, uh, or uh, this is uh, what it's called feed forward, adjust the right speed to wind the material. Um, now, taking into account this uh, DC motor example, I prepared a small uh, diagram to explain how it would work. Well, the, the speed of a motor of a, of a DC motor it depends directly of the tension of uh, well, the, well, the feeding tension uh, E of T. The main disturbance that may suffer is due to a, a mechanical pair or a motor pair, which uh, slows, uh, well, which stops or accelerates the motor, which would be our disturbance. The the actuator, the the power actuator uh, receives a signal of of control, which would be our C of T and delivers a tension, which would be U of T, with the power uh, necessary to move the motor. Um, the problem in this system would be measuring the, the mechanical pair uh, of the motor on the axis, because it may, uh, uh, because when it's on high speed, you can't really measure it without uh, having uh, high risks so um, we because this measurement is hard to to effectuate um, 
it, it is usually uh, approximated, uh, measuring the current that uh, goes uh, through the uh, motor's inductor. Now, what are some advantages and disadvantages uh, of uh, feed forward control? Well, as this is an open loop control system, it has all its advantages and disadvantages. Uh, some of them are listed uh, on the slide. Uh, the advantages of this type of control are that it does not add instability to the system. It responds to disturbances before the system output is changed. Um, and it helps make non-linear systems more stable. The disadvantages of this type of control are it does not respond to disturbances that cannot be measured. The effect of disturbances in the system must be known. And uh, it may have errors because it does not measure or compensate for the actual output of the system. This is in case that we don't have a, a, an actual uh, measured uh, disturbance. This is why it, it is normally used combined with cascade control or PAD controllers which work when the feedforward controller delivers a signal high enough to be sensed by the controller, which would be the error for the case of a PID controller. When should, when should we be using a feedforward control? Well, um, one situation where it may offer value is if a process variable uh, critical to a process uh, simply cannot be measured or inferred using currently available technology. Feedforward control, um, in spite of its weaknesses and pitfalls, offers some potential for improved operation in highly interactive and dynamic systems. For practical applications, the feedforward architecture utilizes a model of the disturbance to determine the timing and size of an appropriate PID controller response. By initiating the response in synchrony with the disturbances arrival, feedforward effectively neutralizes the offset and avoids the, uh, the negative impact uh, to, control, to control loop perform performance. The concept of feedforward is easy to grasp. Even so, there are several aspects that should be taken into, con into consideration before uh, implementing this, uh, the, this kind of controls, including the instrumentation needs, uh, which uh, in order to maintain awareness of the disturbances, an additional sensor is needed. Without it, engineering uh, will remain um, blind and the process will continue to be battered. It should be uh, installed at the source of the offsets and capable of accurately measuring the size of each disturbance. <clears throat> we have again, uh, another consideration would be a dueling uh, model. Uh, modeling the process is a known necessity of PID controllers, but modeling the upstream disturbance is an added requirement of feedforward. Both models are incorporated into the feedforward element. Um, a control architecture uh, contained with the associated uh, PLC or DCS um, with an accurate model of the disturbance, the fit forward um, uh, control uh, may prepare an appropriate response. We have again a dead time uh, uh, consideration. Uh, it may seem obvious, but the dead time of the process must be shorter than the dead time of the disturbance. If it's not, then the disturbance will impact the process before the control loop's response can be initiated. In such a situation, feedforward control offers no value, so it shouldn't be used. And we have uh, options uh, galore. Um, implement, uh, implement, when we implement feedforward, uh, it can range uh, from easy to uh, a really difficult architecture and, uh, well, it can become very expensive due to the sensors and the, uh, the arrangement for, for, uh, for the system. The simplest way is to apply a static or bypassing a, uh, or a, um, uh, well, a, a bypass approach 
which limits the disturbance model to a value for gain. In this case, we don't have any time components involved. On the other end of the spectrum is a fully dynamic approach. This approach requires a value for all first order plus dead time model components. Uh, usually, a significant time is required uh, only with only marginal improvement uh, to performance. That it means that it's gonna take a lot of time and uh, and uh, it's going to barely improve a uh, system. Uh, in the end, the choice should be driven by the needs of the process and plant, uh, which is the case for some gas and other fluids uh, uh, necessities uh, in, in some processes. Thank you very much.